Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Mind's Eye. Thank you all for tuning in. So tonight, I want to tackle the second episode of How I Became a Fan. And tonight, we're going to talk about the one and only Twisted Sister. So I want to talk about how I became a fan of Twisted Sister of all bands. And just talk a little bit about what exactly this band means to me and why I love them so much. So for context, we have to go all the way back to 2003 when I spent most of the year becoming obsessed with Van Halen and um, I got I collected all the Van Halen albums except for VH3 by about 4th of July. Balance was the last one that I had to get. I got it like right before the 4th <clears throat> and I sort of coasted out the rest of the year on Van Halen. Come 2004 um, I was really starting to uh, want to expand my musical taste. I was starting to get into Metallica like late 2003 and I was starting to really kind of get interested in what all other bands were out there. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, at the time, VH1 actually played some good shows. And uh, a lot of their content really revolved around, like, 80s metal, 80s hair metal, and whatnot. And I happened to catch myself watching one of those shows where they were counting down the top whatever number of hair bands. And it was hosted by D. Snyder, of all people. And in second place, they put Twisted Sister. <clears throat> and... As Dee was starting to talk about Twisted Sister, and uh, they were showing clips of the video for We're Not Gonna Take It, and playing clips of the song We're Not Gonna Take It, and I was really digging it, and really liking it, and getting into it, and um, I really wanted to, it was a band that I really wanted to check out. Of all, the, of all the bands that they talked about on that countdown, Twisted Sister was the one that I latched onto and really wanted to explore. So eventually, a month or two after that, my mom picks me up, Stay Hungry um from the store and uh as soon as she brings it home to me i pop this thing on and uh it was almost like my brain short-circuited as soon as i heard stay hungry because i was just like reactionless to it but it, not in a bad way like i really liked what i heard but i almost didn't process it in a way i don't know what it was there's just something about something about the song just like almost short short-circuited my mind and it just sort of really blew my fuse and then next up, of course, the classic, We're Not Gonna Take It. And uh, I love the song instantly. I mean, it was love at first here, for sure. Um, I just love the way that this band was, I mean, it was catchy. It was melodic. I love the sound. I love the us against the world mentality that the band had and really put into almost every song. And uh, it just clicked with me, being a... 13 year old eighth grader at the time never have having been the most popular kid in school this band just clicked with me it just resonated with me on so many levels and uh stay hungry was just the start you know i finished listening to this album and uh really dug it became obsessed with this album played it practically non-stop for weeks and uh that was just a start right there so after this of course, I was really interested in hearing what else Twisted Sister had to offer. And this was back in the day before you could get onto YouTube and, and listen to any album you wanted to, or you couldn't go on to Spotify and stream. You had to actually buy the CD. The best the internet could do for you was maybe give you like 30 second, 30 second or so clips of songs, and you could find that on like Amazon or Walmart or uh, VH1. A couple different sites had them. And I was scrolling through VH1, reading about all their different albums and whatnot. And I clicked, I was clicking on different songs and hearing snippets of them. And I came to Bad Boys of Rock and Roll. And the snippet began right before the chorus started. And it played through the chorus. And then came that main riff. And it was just like chills down my spine when I first heard it. And like, again, I almost couldn't believe my ears. And I had to have the song. I had to have the song. So... I set out a search to find an album with that song. I could not anywhere find Under the Blade in any CD store I went to. And I was trying to save like my CD getting that my, you know, when my mom agreed to get me a CD, I was trying to save it because I wanted to have Bad Boys. So like if they didn't have it, I was kind of like, oh, I kind of want to save it till I can find Under the Blade or something. Eventually, I found this compilation at a uh, circuit city 
And as I was going through the track list on the back, totally not expecting Bad Boys to be on here at all. Uh, track 7, Bad Boys of Rock and Roll. So I picked this one right up. <clears throat> and uh, I was with my dad, and we uh, hopped in the car, started heading home. And I put this in and went straight for Bad Boys. And just the way the song started with the A.J. Perro's drum right into the main riff of the song, you know, chills down the spine, goosebumps, the whole nine yards. And uh, to this day, Bad Boys of Rock and Roll is still my favorite Twisted Sister song. Um, I did another video talking specifically about that song and what I love about it. So if you're interested, please check that out. But as for the rest of this, I mean, I got some other great songs like You Can't Stop Rock and Roll. Looking out for number one, Tear It Loose, Out in the Streets, even Leader of the Pack. You know, I don't hate Leader of the Pack. I just I just hate what it did for Twisted Sister's career. But still, um, I play this out. And just, just like Stay Hungry, I played this one out for weeks. Um, however long it took me to finally get Under the Blade. And You Can't Stop Rock and Roll. I got these two albums together. Um... I had to order them off Amazon because I could not find them in CD stores anywhere. But uh, they finally arrived, and uh, I put my CD player on the uh, my portable CD player on the kitchen table, and uh, put under the blade in, and just went to town, intently listened to this thing. Of course, Bad Boys is on it, but just so many other great songs like "What You Don't Know Sure Can Hurt You," which is just the ultimate opening Twisted Sister song to anything. Um, Great concert opener, too. I I love that song live, actually, more than I like it in the studio, to be honest. But, um, you know, Shoot Them Down and Under the Blade, Tear It Loose, Destroyer, great stuff. I mean, I just, my love for this album equaled my love for Stay Hungry. And uh, I was I was in. I was, I was all in. And um, as soon as this album wrapped up, I put this one on. And again, just the start of this album with The Kids Are Back. Like a Knife in the Back, which I love the riff in that song. That is such a cool riff. Ride to Live, Live to Ride. Then I Am, I Me comes on. And uh, I specifically remember sitting there. The song starts. And musically, it's like a it's a very simple song. I mean, even I can play it. <laughs> and I'm I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm an amateur guitar player at best. I'm not, no, I'm, I'm, you know, no great guitar player by any means. But like even, even I can play this song. <laughs> But there's just something about the way that D sings the song. The way that his voice, the, the feeling and the power that he puts behind his voice when he's singing these words and the melody that he sings them in is just, gives you goosebumps. And it just was something that when I was listening to the first verse of this song, I just remember in my mind thinking, this is my band. This is my favorite band. This, you know, Twisted Sister, this is it. This is my band right here. And from that point on, like, they officially were my favorite band. And for the next year and a half, like, it was not even close. I mean, I had a handful of bands that were second place at Twisted Sister, but it wasn't close. They lapped the field with pretty much everybody. And uh, any other band that I've ever considered my favorite or ever kind of sat at the top of the list for me, it's always been close. You know, there's always a handful of bands that just I can't pick between it or it's, it's so hard to pick between but for this year to year and a half where twisted sister ruled the world for me it wasn't even close it wasn't even close to my second place they were lapping the field with them so um the obsession continues and uh i get love is for suckers for my birthday actually and uh this album was a lot different than um you know the first three twisted sister albums that i had wasn't as angry, wasn't as angsty, and those albums really resonated with me because, you know, at that point in time, I'm 8th grade, you know, going on to ninth grade the following year, and uh, I was not the most popular kid, you know, so it just, you know, Twisted Sisters, Us Against the World mentality, D. Snyder's anger, his feeling that he sang with resonated with me, and this one was more, you know, outside of Wake Up the Sleeping Giant, which is a very classic sounding Twisted Sister track, this is a little bit of a funner album. So like, when I can get away from the stress of being at school and I can kind of get away from the stress of the world and can just sort of do my own thing and kind of find my own happy place, this kind of became the soundtrack of just me enjoying life. And um, songs like, I Want This Night to Last Forever, 
cheesy as all get out, but like it's such a feel good song. Me and the boys, you know, I love that one as well. Hot love. Um, you're All That I Need, which is a nice ballad. And one of my favorite Twisted Sister songs is a bonus track on here called If That's What You Want. Um, that's top five Twisted Sister song for me. I've always loved it. So, um, and I got, like I said, I got this album for my birthday, which was late April. It was a couple months until I was able to round out my Twisted Sister collection with Come Out and Play. I got this one like in, I want to say June or July, maybe early August. Um, it was right before I saw Twisted Sister in concert, which I saw them in August 14th of, uh, 2004. And, uh, I did a video talking about that experience altogether, so if you're interested, please go check that one out as well. I'd appreciate it. But, uh, I got this album around that time. It was always the one that resonated with me the least, though this album still has its moments, it still has its bangers. Um, and it was definitely nice to kind of have the whole collection, um... And honestly, with as much as I love this band, five albums just it wasn't enough. <laughs> I wanted so much more than just those five albums. And eventually I did go out and, and I got like, uh, you know, this album right here. And I'm not a big live album guy, to be honest with you. But I remember listening to this one like every night for a while. And, uh, you know, the Club Days albums and whatnot, um, I eventually picked up. And uh, D. Snyder's solo album, his Widowmaker albums. I, I got um, his first Widowmaker album, Blood and Bullets relatively close to the time that I got this. This was released in the fall of 2004. And I just remember uh, volunteering at my grandmother's church to, like, rake up leaves and just sort of, like, odd jobs around the place. And I would just take my CD player and jam out to this or to Widowmaker. And, um, I mean, it was awesome. I mean, back, back in those days, Twisted Sister was definitely my soundtrack band for that, for that phase of my life. And, um, it's more than just their music for me. Like, of course, their music really spoke to me and resonated with me on so many levels. Their us-against-the-world mentality, D. Snyder's attitude, um, their music. It was just like the words that I couldn't say, being, ex you know, I could express it through Twisted Sister. And um, I felt that way about, like, almost all of their material, almost all of their material, all their albums um but beyond that the more that i researched and looked up the band um the more i just really resonated with the guys and uh, d snyder i always found it really awesome and i was always kind of proud of the fact that the uh, singer from at the time my favorite band was one of the guys who stood up to uh tipper gore during the uh 19 i think it was 1985 hearings about uh trying to censor music, and uh, the fact that D. Snyder didn't dress up, he, he went in looking like D. Snyder, maybe not like, not like that D. Snyder, but he went in with his, his hair all curled out with his, like, leather, or not leather, but his, like, his denim twisted sister jacket on, and uh, proceeded to really eloquently defend rock music, and really tear down Tipper Gore's attacks on Twisted Sister, and bands like Twisted Sister, and, uh, I always thought that was so awesome, I loved, I've watched that hearing on YouTube a couple times, and I, I love watching it, but, um, it really spoke to me that how misunderstood of a band Twisted Sister always seems to have been, and I loved it because that's how I always felt, especially when I was that age, like, I was just misunderstood, and that nobody really got me, and so the fact that my favorite band was also a band that just always seemed to get picked on by Tipper Gore trying to say that, you know, Under the Blade is this dirty, disgusting song when it's about throat surgery. And, uh, I saw, I saw an interview one time, it was a written interview with Dee Snyder, and he was sort of playing off that, that whole, uh, Tipper Gore situation, and he was coming up with all these, like, wacky ideas of what uh, the songs on Love is for Suckers meant. And, uh, when I found, when I kind of realized how sarcastic he was being, I wound up, like, absolutely loving it, and, like, I don't know, I just thought it was really, really awesome, <laughs> but, um, as he said in that, uh, hearing that he has these, uh, Christian values, which, I mean, I was raised a Christian, I, I am a Christian, and as much as I'm a big fan of this kind of music, I was never into the whole sex, drugs, and rock and roll 
thing, you know. D. Snyder married his wife before Twisted Sister made it big, and he's still married to her all throughout the 80s when he had his success through his fall, you know, the band's fall in the 90s where he worked a normal job, and then sort of them getting back together in the 2000s and to this day, he's still married to Suzette, and I always pictured myself being that person who found one person and stayed married to her, and I never was interested in, in being like Gene Simmons or Paul Stanley, who were like, well, you know, <laughs> no need to no need to discuss that. Um, I was never never interested in in drinking or drugs or anything like that, or the the access that so many other bands like Van Halen were. Eddie Van Halen was a huge drinker, and uh, you know bands like Motley Crue were big into the and Guns N' Roses big into the access. You know, Metallica were, were, I mean, they were called Alcoholica for a reason back in the day. And I was, ne that was never me. I was never interested. You know, I may not have been popular. I, my school life may not have been the greatest. It was not the worst. There were definitely people who were far, um, far worse off than I was, but I was by no means popular. And I got my fair share of being picked on and whatnot. But I was never interested in turning to drugs or alcohol. And it was nice to have a, a the lead singer of my band and, and really all the guys in my band weren't into that. And, um, I don't know, I just, I looked up to that and it was, it kind of was like reassuring that you don't have to turn on the things that you value and, and do things that you don't want to do to love this kind of music. And like, I don't know that I ever really seriously thought I was ever going to make a career in music, but like at the time it was definitely a dream, you know? And it was kind of nice to know that I didn't have to like go down a road I didn't want to go down to do that. And I just always respected the guys in Twisted Sister for that. J.J. French has said that the great irony in his life is that he started this band to get away from drugs. And um, I've never done drugs. I've never been drunk, ever. You know, the only... I consume the occasional glass of wine, maybe like at Christmas time, but I have never been drunk. Um, I don't smoke any of that. I'm not interested. So I, I really respected the guys for that. Um, for Dee Snyder to actually admit in that hearing that he had, that he was uh, born and raised and still holds to Christian values, um, I really respected that. And um, so not only does this band have lyrics and music that resonates with me and speaks to me and feels like it's the words that I can't, I can't come up with on my own to sort of combat the world, and this band just perfectly is doing it for me. Um, but I just had such a ton of respect the more that I learned about the guys in the band. You know, I met Dee Snyder. He was a really, really cool guy. Um, unfortunately, I missed out on meeting the other members, but they all seemed like really cool guys. Um, just so much respect for those guys. And um, I really resonated with that, resonated with the way they conducted themselves and the music that they played. And I really uh, kind of like to wear the fact that the band was misunderstood the way that I was. I mean, a lot of people look at Twisted Sister. I want to pull out this picture here. They want they think of Twisted Sister and they think of this band right here with the sort of outrageous costumes, the uh, really sort of tongue-in-cheek videos like we're not going to take it and I want to rock and um leader of the pack and this sort of cartoonish um, persona that they seem to give themselves which unfortunately they doubled down with on come out and play and um, that that's all they think of the band is this, this this like clown act band but you know what in my mind that's twisted sister that's kind of how I think of the guys that's how I think of the band and I think of them as do many of the diehard twisted sister fans as these first couple albums that are really heavy albums. Heavy albums that maybe the production doesn't quite match. But, you know, you got songs like Sin After Sin and Burn in Hell. Heavy songs. Listen to the lyrics, but there are, there are very Christian values lyrics in those songs. Um, and I appreciated that. Songs like uh, Under the Blade, which was about Eddie Ojeda and his throat surgery. Um, but just sort of the song being not only the fear of surgery but just being about sort of fear in general always resonated with me um 
The Price is a song that I just, I love lyrically. I think Dee Snider really, that's one of the songs I think he, it comes across to me that he put the most thought into when he came up with it and when he wrote it. And um, also, The Price is actually my favorite music video from Twisted Sister. I love the video. It's not the like kind of goofy tongue-in-cheek that we're not going to take it and I want to rock for. And those are fun videos, but The Price is just my, it's my favorite Twisted Sister video. I love watching it. Um... Kind of like dark stuff like Captain Howdy and Street Justice. Uh, like That's a song, Horataria, that really feels like they put a lot of thought into. And I think the people who look at Twisted Sister as sort of this goofy looking, we're not going to take it, I want to rock, um, you know, kind of tormenting the dad or the teacher in the videos, you know, Wile E. Coyote style band, probably doesn't realize they have songs like this. I remember sitting... Uh, waiting for Kiss to come on. I was I saw Kiss in 2016 for the uh, um, I forget what the tour was called off the top of my head, but um, they played a Twisted Sister song while you know before Kiss came on, and I was listening to the conversation of uh, the guys that was like in the row below me, and the the one guy was like really digging the song. They were playing Burn in Hell, and he was really digging the song. I was like, who is this? Like, what? Well, this is this is awesome. And the other guy's like, this is Twisted Sister. And the guy's mind was, like, blown. He had no idea that Twisted Sister had a song like that. But, it, you know, it goes beyond that. Stay Hungry, you know. Destroyer. Like a Knife in the Back. Even on this, this one right here, The Fire Still Burns. These, these really super heavy songs that Twisted Sister never was a band that sang about sex all the time. And I, I love that as well. You know, very few, very few songs by Twisted Sister were sort of about that, so, I mean, they were just the perfect band, the right band for me at that point in time, and for a year and a half, they were my obsession, and to this day, because they were such a huge part of my life back then, I'm, I still love them, they're, so, they're still a part of me today, and uh, that is why I'm such a huge Twisted Sister fan of all bands, so, um, if you like this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up, let me know your thoughts on Twisted Sister for all you SMFs out there. How did you get into Twisted Sister? What has the band meant to you? Um, because for me, as you can imagine, I there weren't a lot of other Twisted Sister fans in my class. <laughs> Not a whole lot of other people were big SMFs back in 2004 and in ninth grade in my school. So um, yeah, but they were they were definitely my band. So um, <clears throat> let me know your thoughts. If you like this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future, and I'll catch you next time.